From the crystal gems to the crystal skull, nerds are passionate about a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us for this episode, we have Jordan Dahl. Hello. John Gutierrez. Hola, nerds. <laughs> and Maggie Mayfish. Hi. All right, well, uh, Jordan, you've played with us before, yeah. but uh, for the two of you, for any new viewers at home, the game is very simple. Uh, I have here a stack of untrue statements about the things that you know and like, and it's up to you to correct me. Um, the only two rules are you have to proceed your corrections with um, actually. If you don't, Jeopardy style, I won't give you the point. Uh, and secondly, you can interrupt me whenever you want. The moment you see the thing that's wrong, you can just jump right in there and correct me. No politeness here. This is not a show about being polite. It's a show about being a shitty asshole. Uh, uh, that's, what, that's what we're all about here. Fairly simple rules, I think. Any, any questions? Any, any thoughts? Anything? Yes, Jordan. Can we also say shitty asshole? Yes, I encourage you all to, to say shitty asshole at least one time before the end of this episode. Nice. It'll be like Beetlejuice for the third time you say <laughs> shitty asshole. Oh, shitty, shitty asshole! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was us all along. <laughs> yeah. uh, you guys ready to play? You feeling all right? Oh, yeah. All right, go ahead and grab your ah. buzzers, and we will get started here. This is, uh, this is about He-Man here. He-Man's chief nemesis is Skeletor. <laughs> Maggie. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Uh, um, actually, uh, he is his, like, main nemesis, but there are many nemeses <laughs> in the He-Man universe. You can say chief nemesis. Uh, it's, uh, it's fine. You know what? I don't think I'm going to give you the point for that. I don't agree but, either. Okay. I think you should. <laughs> uh, well, here we go. I love the enthusiasm, though. You, you get quick on the buzzer. That can make a difference. He-Man's chief nemesis is Skeletor, a humanoid man in a blue skin-tight suit with a skull for a head. He wields the Havoc Staff, a long scepter topped with a ram skull and a crystal ball. John. Uh, um, actually, Skeletor is not wearing a skin-tight outfit. He just wears a furry loincloth. That is correct. He is not a blue skin tight suit. He just has blue skin. Yeah. Uh, and the things that he's wearing are those like loin clothy things. I knew it, and I hesitated. And he hesitated. Can't hesitate. Yeah. You, you gotta can get tell. It. That's, no, you that's... should go before you hear the incorrect thing. <laughs> <laughs> so much so that you beat it. You can tell from looking at Skeletor. Mm -hmm. He's just all ripped. It does feel like they were adding like a lot of things. Like, okay, he's a man with a skull for a head. But let's make him sexy. <laughs> give, him, yeah. give him abs and yeah. then show it off. Fucking ripped yeah. and blue. And blue. Let's like make him blue too. Yeah. Uh, that's Sexiest color. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. like the Smurfs. Oh my God. Have you seen them? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a point. Uh, point for, I keep want to call you Goots. Is it a problem? You can like call goods? me Goots if you call want. Me, Everyone calls me Goots. Is that a, you say that very begrudgingly, like you don't want that to actually happen. I just feel weird when people ask me if they should call me Goots. It just feels, <laughs> I, I can't determine the level of Goots that this conversation have. I have I reached Goots level yet? You have. All right, great. Well, that is a point for Goots. I will call you that. Viewers at home, please do not call Jonathan Gutierrez Goots. Not yet. Not until you know him a little bit better. <laughs> well, we will move on here <laughs> to a question about Street Fighter. In Street Fighter, the character of Balrog was originally named and modeled after Muhammad Ali, but fearing legal reprisals when releasing the... Yet, yeah, uh, Goots. Uh, he was actually based on... Um, actually... <laughs> uh, was that enough? I had it. <laughs> do I have to go back in time? No, no, that's um, fine. It's fine. Uh, he was... Um, actually, he was based off of Mike Tyson and was originally named M. Bison in Japan, uh -huh. and they simply switched him with Balrog, who uh, was uh, M. Bison in America. They made that switch from him. That is correct. I can tell from Jordan's face that he knew it as well. I knew that as well. I see Maggie nodding. I, I thought about it, but I, uh, I knew my previous mistake, and I was like, hold your horses. <laughs> they were totally right to be wary there. Mike sure. Bison is not a great legal cover, right? Well, and at the same time, Mike Tyson was at like peak punching people for things. Yeah. <laughs> so he was like, is it supposed to be me? Oh, great. Quick correction for you in case you care. Yeah. Uh, but you said that it was correct that M. Bison and Balrog were swapped. Ah. Uh, but actually, it was M. Bison and Vega. Vega. And Balrog were all rotated. Yes. Whoa. I wanted to throw that out. Well, you had a good game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wow. Well, I'll, I'll see myself take your buzzer. <laughs> so we will not give you the point. Uh, no, that is still, still one point for you. All right, we'll keep it. Moving right along. This is gonna be about X-Men. The X-Men Cyclops is often recognized by his iconic ruby quartz visor. Without his visor or some other means of inhibiting his abilities, when Cyclops opens his eyes, they become apertures to another dimension, causing that... focus. Yes, Jordan? Um, actually, he releases a kinetic blast uh, from his uh, 
handsomeness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, here's the thing. You are correcting the thing. I'm correcting the correct thing. I just didn't let you finish. You're correcting the correct thing. You weren't really correcting at the correct time, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and allow it. What? I'm going yes! to say yes! that's a point for Jordan. It is true that those concuss the, the concussive blasts are uh, as a, a result of apertures opening to another dimension, but... Uh, the thing that was going to be wrong had I finished the sentence was I was going to say there were laser beams. Okay. They're not laser beams. They're, they're, they're concussive optic blasts. So you did end up correcting the thing that would jittery. eventually yeah, yeah, yeah. be wrong. I got jittery and, and traveled forward two seconds in yeah. time. And at no point did you say they're not apertures to another dimension. So everything you said, technically correct. You get, did get the correct correct. What game is this? Yeah, okay, I, 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 what are we playing? How dare you award my... points for <laughs> things that are all entirely correct. <laughs> just going to start correcting th just guesses. Yeah. Um, actually, there were only four turtles. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, because when I learned that, I was like, so he, my dude just shoots punches from his eyes? That's amazing. <laughs> That's a good ability to have. It, it does feel like you do, it would be one that like Cyclops mm -hmm. would constantly be having to explain. It's like, it's like, oh, you shoot lasers? It's like, no, they're, not, they're not lasers. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people think God. that because they look and smell like lasers. And for all kinds of purposes, are lasers. Do you uh, smell lasers? It's sure. like, they're not lasers, come on. <laughs> I remember a couple times in the comics, they've specified that sometimes his kinetic blasts heat things up so fast that they explode, making it look like like lasers, oh, but it's definitely not lasers. Yeah, so. that, at that point, that feels like it's just like, come, yeah, yeah call it like, it's not a laser. <laughs> come on, man. Just pretend it's a laser. Yeah. <laughs> just tell people. Just, people it's... Will just tell them it's a laser. What are you <laughs> getting out of explaining it's yourself? It's important to me. It's important Ooh. to me that they know it's a concussive optic blast. I think when you are an X-Man, you have to be super nerdy and pedantic about it. <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah, you have to be very actually... specific because there is an X-Man out there who does have lasers for eyes, yeah. and sure. you have to separate yourself yeah. to be a unique special yeah. person. Like, oh, you're just like Cyclops. And they're both like, no, 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 no. no this no. is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> you think all laser eyed dudes go to the same, go ride the same bus? Okay, see, I don't have laser eyes. That's the <laughs> <laughs> We're confusing ourselves now, and that's a problem. Uh, yeah, that's a point for Jordan. Yes. Here's a question about Harry Potter. In addition to housing seven years' worth of students, Hogwarts is the home of several ghosts, including Nearly Headless Nick, Peeves, Moaning Myrtle, the Grey Lady, and the Fat Friar. Ooh, there were a lot of buttons oh. coming in, but Goots oh. is first. Uh, um, actually, Peeves isn't technically a ghost, he's a poltergeist? That's correct, yeah. Ah. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I thought that I would stump you guys with this one. Really? I really? did, yeah. I thought it, I was gonna beat both of you. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, God, you were both coming in the hot bus. Yeah, very technically not a ghost, a poltergeist, which is a completely separate entity, uh, uh, at least in, in the Harry Potter yeah, universe. Yeah, not in reality. Not, not in reality. Right. In reality, yeah. just a type of ghost, yeah. so as we yeah. all know. Subspecies. <laughs> You're like running to the same Cyclops problem here. But it's like, I'm not a ghost. <laughs> like, Listen, I know I do ghost things. I yeah. float. I look like a ghost. I do ghost things. I am a ghost, but I'm not a ghost. Yeah, can we cut him out of the movies now? Like, <laughs> yeah. He just spends his entire time explaining how he's not a ghost. <laughs> yeah. Can a ghost here. do this? He throws a mug. Yes, yes. a ghost can do yes. that. <laughs> they like being ghosts, right? They yeah. party, they like it. I think so. I think yeah. they, they, I guess they never really delve into the sort of the the <gasps> existential question um, of actually oh. they oh. do oh, shit. Uh, so when you die there's like a choice where you can like either some sort of cosmic like oh you can choose to like have your body uh stay mm. on earth uh and as nearly headless nick tells harry he doesn't think his parents would have made that choice so or serious yeah. they're not yeah. ghosts so but then so then it's the implication then that the only people who like when they die are like are like, yeah, that was enough for me, are the ghosts, that you, it's like a purely voluntary thing? Yeah, they keep it a little vague for <laughs> like, for J.K. Rowling's purposes, yeah. I'm sure, but. Yeah, otherwise it seems like, like what, just huge existential questions with dealing yeah. with the fact that there's Why a ghost. Why would you be a ghost? Yeah. Right. A like, huge signing bonus, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, we want you for the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> we give you 20 grand if you be a ghost right now. This is a very big choice you have to make. You're either gonna be a ghost for the rest of infinity, for the sure. rest of eternity, yeah. or not. I'm, I'm picturing like a ton of 11 year olds getting to this point in the book and having the same thought yeah. and just putting it yeah. down yeah. and staring uh, into the darkness of their room. Yeah, it's just like, what, it, what is, is forever? forever? <laughs> what does forever mean? What is a ghost? <laughs> Am I a ghost? Just that chapter, nearly headless Nick turns to the reader and says, <laughs> you will be a ghost. It says, you, huh. yes you, Kyle. You choose now, write your name in blood in the pages and tell us what you would like to do when you die. <laughs> 
Those poor <laughs> Harry Potter kids would absolutely do it. That's <laughs> true. Uh, well, this brings us to our game's first shiny question. Now, shiny questions are kind of like shiny Pokemon in that they are basically worth the same thing. They're just a little bit different and a little bit rarer. So it's a different format of question. And this is a game we call Crypto Geography. This is a game about uh, mythology and folklore. So uh, when you flip over your boards, you're going to see a map of the world and uh, six different monsters. These are monsters from like just you know folklore from around the world. Uh, and I want you to try to place these monsters from their country of origin, or as best as you can. Whoever can place the most correctly will get the one point for this shiny question. Uh, make sense? Cool. Let's flip over those maps and take a look. What are you? <laughs> Speak to me. <laughs> Who are you? Goots is giving a nod. He's ready to go. Maggie giving a nod. That leaves Jordan sitting there, staring at his yaoi. I'm ready. Trying to figure you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> go blind like that, staring uh, at your yaoi. Jordan, let's go ahead and like turn yours out and tell okay. us tell us what, what we're looking at here. OK, I, uh, I, I, I know that the yaoi is from Australia. OK. Uh, Seropard, Serpopard. Uh, that's, I'm imagining some sort of a leopard serpent. Mm -hmm. uh, that feels African somehow, perhaps Egyptian. Okay. Uh, Canonsistontes? Mm -hmm. Never heard of that before in my life, but Flying Skull, that's got Greek written all over it. <laughs> uh, Korkoi, that's uh -huh. my Mongolian death worm right there, so uh -huh. obviously uh, Mongolia. Uh, Impundulu, I, I had to go Iran. Okay. Uh, it feels, feels mid Middle Eastern, perhaps. Okay. Uh, and Hualapen. I've never heard of you. You're going in America. That feels Native American somehow. Okay, cool. Looking at this, I think that you, I'm going to give you, uh, I think, three points. I think you got three. Oh, no, okay. I'm going to save it for the end to, to see, uh, uh, to, to give us the final answers and say which ones are right. But Goots, let's take a look at your map. How are you doing here? I think mine was very similar. Okay. Um, I think the Hualapan, mm -hmm. I was feeling that that was South American, mm -hmm. maybe Peru or Brazil. I realized I just put it on Brazil. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't un this long one right here. <laughs> it just seemed very Greek, so yeah, I assumed it was that. Uh -huh. uh, Serpapard, I thought also that was African. Mm -hmm. I was trying to put it on Kenya. Now I'm realizing I didn't really take into account where the, the specific places I was putting were. were. Um, I did say country. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, well, I lock it in there. Yeah. Uh, China, I thought for Olga. Cork Khan, uh -huh. uh, Impodulu, I thought uh, Philippines. Okay. And Yaoi as Australian because they give ridiculously cute names to horrible things <laughs> in Australia. <laughs> so. That is very true. <laughs> I think I'm going to give you two points for this one, um, um, but we will move on to Maggie and, uh, and final thing, and then the point where you argue with me and say, you should have given me more points than that. See if you can spot the incorrect element of this statement. Consumers have lots of choices when it comes to internet service providers, all of whom are noble companies who would respect monopoly laws, offer you great service, and never sell your data to the highest bidder. That's right, pretty much every part of that sentence was wrong. But when it comes to ISPs, we have pretty much zero choice since they operate more like monopolies. I mean, you've had to call these guys before. They suck. And they're more than willing to take advantage of you through weird fees and even selling your data. Yeah, so what is ExpressVPN? ExpressVPN is a simple app for your computer or your smartphone that encrypts your network data and funnels it through a secure VPN server so your ISP can't see what you're up to. And it doesn't even slow your computer down. Just think about how much of your life is on the internet. Do you know what kind of weird stuff I've had to search for for this show? Weird monster erotica, mating habits for different aliens, what Jar Jar looks like without clothes. Okay, and those are the kinds of things that I don't want my internet service provider knowing about me. So stop handing over your personal data to ISPs and other big tech giants who are just gonna mine your activity and sell your information. Visit expressvpn.com slash actually to learn more. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash actually and get three months extra for free. That's expressvpn.com slash actually. Let's see what Maggie's got. Okay, all right. Uh, so let's start. Uh, I put the Yowie in Russia. <laughs> okay. Because I was like, Yeti, Yowie. Yeah, that's... 
they really know each other. That totally tracks. Yeah, it's, it's like a cousin kind yeah, of thing, or it's like a slight. It's like oh yeah, here uh, here in Nepal they call it Yeti. Russia, it's like a slightly different. Slightly kind of thing. different because yeah. they like they like to be unique. Yeah. So uh, this uh, can't this one. Uh-huh. Uh, I have a best friend from Greece, and his name is Andrew Kantsos. Mm. He's very close uh. to this guy, so I put him in uh, put him in, in Greece, put him yeah. in Greece area. Um, this is a little wormy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he seemed like, you know, maybe China in this area, but I put him more towards the ocean, so yeah. maybe Japan area. Um, he's cute. Uh, this guy, I put him in Australia because I was like, he kind of looks like a dingo. Kind of <laughs> like, if from a distance, uh, I was thinking maybe, you know, like uh, Australia's chupacabra. Apparently I'm wrong, but that, <laughs> I was just explaining myself. That's uh. why I put that there. Uh, in Pundulu, I was like, yeah, somewhere in uh, in Africa. Uh, mm-hmm. I know they have some sort of flying bird creature. <laughs> so then I was like, eh. Um, and then uh, Serpentard, uh, I put down here in, uh, you're like uh, Brazil, Argentina. All right. For no reason. I think that, I don't know if I can give you any points for this one, unfortunately. But I explained myself really But well. I love all these. Yeah, I Thank totally you. see the logic behind all the, all the choices. Well, why don't we go ahead and let's slap that map on up there. Jordan, you had three with the most correct. Um, so I'm going to say you won this one. So the Canonsis Tontes, uh, that's an Iroquois uh, monster. So that is, that's from North America. The uh, Wallapen, or maybe Guayapen? Uh, I don't know if this is a, a Spanish word or a um, uh, or some sort of native language word. Uh, this is a. Let's see if we get this correct. Oh, this right. It's a. It's from Chile. Um, it has the head of a calf, the body of a sheep, and twisted feet with we- webbed sort of webbed feet. Drags people into rivers and things. There's there's that that <laughs> little guy there. Uh, Jordan, uh, you got right. The Ogoe Korkoi is the Mongolian death worm. Oh, yeah. That is from Mongolia. A weird one. Yes. Uh, Goots, you had him in China, but he was in the Mongolia area. I gave you a point mm-hmm. for that one because it was it was you, you're on your map. It was in Mongolia, even though you said the China area. Like the sandworms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the sandworms basically. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Yowie, you were correct there as well. This is a sort of Australian Bigfoot with a cute name because the, the terrible thing with a cute name, as is yeah. the Australian way. Um, your Serpopard was a little bit off. In your explanation, you said, in Africa, around Egypt, is Egypt, Mesopotamia, that sort of area. I gave you a point for that one. That was smart, that was was a very good. Feels super Egyptian, right? Uh, Lastly, the Impundalu uh, is uh, a large, uh, sort of Thunderbird-type bird from South Africa. Um, Lightning flying, I believe, very strong. Very strong. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, So that, for your Serpopard, your Mongolian Deathworm, and your Yowie, uh, three for you. That's more than anyone else, so you get the point for that shiny question. Yes! Two points to rub together. <laughs> Keep me warm in those long nights, <laughs> hiding from the Serpa part. <laughs> I, I love uh, they like would see pictures of them depicted, but there wasn't any like, no captions or anything like this is a this thing. So it was just sort of like <laughs> serpent leopard. Serpo part there. We're done. That's what we call it. I don't know. The guy said yeah. he needed monsters on the castle by this afternoon. Yeah. I cooked some I'm stitching up. as fast as I can. <laughs> I'm running out of ideas. I put birds on. Mod, mod, it's I put. just animal parts everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I had a whiteboard. Yeah. <laughs> shit, 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 shit. Uh, 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 legs of a horse, head Elephant. of a pony. No, that's dumb, that's dumb. Elephant bat? I don't know. I don't know. Now look, nothing's ever going to beat the griffin. <laughs> <laughs> we beat right. the griffin. God. Uh, I remember the griffin days. They I rolled hired that you because of the griffin. <laughs> I, sometimes I feel like I'm just chasing that griffin, you know. I'll never have another good idea like that again. <laughs> I've got it. Head of a lion. Body of an eagle. No, that's terrible. <laughs> I got it. Head of an Indian elephant, body of an African. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> slap, slap, slap. What are you doing? We got two hours left and you're giving me crap. <laughs> this is the body of an eagle attached to the body of a hawk. <laughs> Flying around, <laughs> fighting each other. Yeah. <laughs> Just spinning. How does it eat? They two left really wings. <laughs> oh. I like that we've decided this guy sounds like a Brooklyn plumber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm your monster maker. Down here, trying to jam these animals together. <laughs> some of you noticed that we made some mistakes in our last episode. Here are our favorite corrections from you. Mr. Javier Barrios says, um, actually, the Baratheon sigil is just the stag without the crown. The crown is present in the first six seasons because a Baratheon is king. Technically, Cersei is queen now, and thus the crown will be removed and placed on the Lannister sigil. One point for Mr. Javier Barrios. 
At Charles0722 says, Um, actually, you said the low HP noise in Pokemon means that the Pokemon is about to die, but it's actually about to faint. Pokemon never die. They only go to a farm where they can run around and play with all the other Pokemon. And from our dropout Discord, Bookworm Pendragon says, Um, actually, in one shiny question, you refer to a Manticore as having wings as one of its key features. While certain modern media, such as Dungeons and Dragons, give it wings, it is never described as having them in mythology, the topic you specify. That's correct, you got me. Get those wings off that Manticore. Uh, here we are. This is about the Dark Crystal. <laughs> Gelflings are creatures in the movie The Dark Crystal. They are slender, humanoid beings with pointed ears and butterfly-like wings who originally inhabited Thra. Maggie. Um, actually, they're not skinny. They're kind of like, they're stout. Uh, <laughs> hey, don't judge the Gelflings here. Uh, I, I think they're, I think they're skinny. I think they're, are they're they slender. Skinny? I think they're all right. I think they're proportionate to the rest of their body. I'm not saying that this is the correctable statement, but I am saying that I, I would disagree. I will accept your disagreement, but I will not give you a point for it. Fair. I agree with Jordan. that. Um, actually, they don't have wings. Can you be more specific? They don't have butterfly-like wings. They have more insectoid, dragonfly-like wings. I'm gonna see if Goots can be more specific because I have a I feeling he might he might swoop in here. Um, actually, I have that same feeling. <laughs> um, actually, uh, girl gelflings have wings. The boys do not. Rats. That is correct. Yeah. Yes, that's obviously <laughs> correct. <laughs> obviously correct. Female gelflings have yeah. wings. Uh, males do not. My yeah. goodness, the gender binary even reaches to the gelflings. I, I yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like it is like inspired from like because I think they're like insects that are like there's some insects that where it's like the females have wings and the males are just like crawling around in the dirt and stuff. But yeah. it does mean like. How much of that insect life ex continues to extend to gelflings? Like, oh, whoa, 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 come on. <laughs> you don't want to go down this train of thought? You don't yeah, gelflings to... drink human blood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they throw up honey. <laughs> and yeah. They rip off the heads and devour them. <laughs> the peaceful gelflings of Thrawn. <laughs> That's why the women have wings, so they can swoop down and just eat yeah. bite, bite heads off. Lay their eggs in a tarantula that then has yeah. to live for six months. So. Oh, so glad they didn't have after credit scenes in the dark crystal <laughs> at that time. <laughs> Poor Oh. Pupation. Yeah. Pinch your mouth. It ends with a special thank you to David Cronenberg for <laughs> directing this. <laughs> thank you. It's like an AI situation. It's like, yeah, it, like half of it was directed. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was half a Henson production, and the other half was Cronenberg. <laughs> Honestly, not a bad idea. Yeah, you that's kind of yeah. yeah. hey, wow. uh, Can we get Henson and Cronenberg <laughs> and put those together? Let's uh, get that monster guy to mash them together. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the head of David it did such Cronenberg. Great work. <laughs> it's a monster mash. <laughs> Is some kind of graveyard smash going? I'm not gonna stop here. This is dumb. <laughs> this bit is dumb. Uh, great. Well, uh, that is uh, another point for Goots. If it makes uh, you feel any better, the boy Gelflings didn't know in the movie. It doesn't. It definitely doesn't oh, make sorry. me feel better. <laughs> I don't understand what makes people feel better about things. I'm sorry. If it cheers you up, my points are very heavy. <laughs> Hard to carry. All right, our next question is about Star Trek. There have been several United Space starships with the moniker Enterprise and thus several different captains, including James T. Kirk, Jean-Luc Picard, Catherine Janeway, and Jonathan Archer. Goots very tentatively buzzing in. Um, actually, they're just United Starships, not United Space Starships. Weirdly, they are United Space Starships. Oh, they that, are? Is, that is the USS Enterprise, and the second, the first S stands for space. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was United oh. Starship. Yeah. Oh. Well, we might need our, fi our fact checker on here. I feel like when I look this up in the space, but let's let's get our fact checker on it. And Jordan, what do, what do you have for me while while we while we check on that? Um, actually. They're all the same ship? Uh, no, there are, they're like different, yeah, they, they go through different, 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 different things like that, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, Janeway was never a captain of the Enterprise, she was captain of USS Voyager. He's That's right. correct, He's That's correct, That's correct. Yeah. yes. Uh, uh, and do we have an answer on, on spaceship yeah, versus? So it's actually, it's either been United Starship or United Spaceship or United States ship. Yep. United States huh. ship? I'm starting to think that none of this really happened. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> none of this matters. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. 
Because um, it's the only thing that matters. <laughs> uh, well, I guess you corrected two things wrong with that, but I'm only going to give you one point. <laughs> <laughs> Just milking points out of questions yeah. where they are How did he points? do that? He got, he, he got a double return on investment from this one <laughs> fucking question. That guy's a real <laughs> shitty asshole. You guys um, don't mind, I'm also going to rearrange the set a little bit. <laughs> yeah. oh. Hobbits have a famous love of food. When they can get it, a hobbit's meals consist of breakfast, second breakfast, elevenses, luncheon, afternoon tea, and and supper. Jordan. Um, actually, I feel like there are more meals than that. You would be correct there. Can you be more specific? Dinner? Second? That's correct. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was like, dinner, that's... <laughs> yep, yep, uh, yeah, you guessed your way straight into that. But, uh, but yeah, there, there is a preferred additional meal that's part of the Hobbit repertoire that is dinner in addition to supper. Uh, Yes, um, that is that is correct. Uh, I feel good about that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna, could, I'm gonna wear this unearned pride. <laughs> All I could think of was nooners, and that's a very different thing. Yeah, I was like going through the the way Pippin says it in my head, which takes some time because yes. he goes. Da, 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 I always remember, what about steak and breakfast? Yeah. <laughs> so good. I was just trying to remember what the Denny's special was. <laughs> yeah. I knew they had a meal. Mm. The early bird special? <laughs> <laughs> they they just go on listing meals forever yeah. that are all just like. <laughs> Moon's over <laughs> my gondola. <laughs> you need to stop eating. You Sub-tober? sound so sick. <laughs> you need to stop eating. Well, somewhere out there, there's a hobbit that's like, you know, actually, it's healthier to eat several small meals throughout the day. Oh, shut up, No, it is. It's really, it's very healthy. <laughs> Seal him up in his hole. Oh, Please! Down there working on a secret eighth meal. Yeah. <laughs> There's got to be a way. You've gone mad. Another meal? <laughs> I'm going to combine brunch and dinner into one thing. <laughs> they got to keep combining. Oh. The same Monster Mash guy. <laughs> it involves time travel somehow. <laughs> I could get lunch I, closer to breakfast. Hobbit's getting stranded on like a desert island yeah. or something, like immediately turned to cannibalism. Oh, it'll be like 20 <laughs> minutes. Yes. Get like, oh my God. <laughs> He's filled with mushrooms. I haven't eaten in an hour. Get the guy you eat small meals. Yeah. I don't trust him. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that is a point for Jordan. Point for Jordan on identifying dinner as the missing Hobbit meal. And this brings us to our second Whoa. shiny question of the game. Uh, this is a game called What's Wrong? We're going to show you an image, and there'll be something wrong with it. And it'll be up to you to identify the thing that is wrong with the image. You guys ready? Yes. All right, let's flip this over. Tell me what's wrong with this image. It's a lot to take in here. It's, of course, an iconic cover of Spider-Man. What could be wrong? Yes, Goots, you're coming in here with a guess. Um, actually, I'm just taking a guess here. Yes. I think Norman Osborn was not originally on this. I think he was already dead by the time this. That's incorrect. No, that <sighs> is that is that is not that has not been changed. More thinking or considering Jordan, he is he's either giving up or he's prominently gonna buzz in. I'm deep dog. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Thinking, thinking. Uh, he's coming in. He's coming in. Yes, oh. Jordan. Um, actually, I'm going to say that the uh, Comics Code Authority was no longer around <laughs> when this... Uh... I love that guess, but no, that's ah. not a stop kiss. Maggie. Uh, there's a dash missing between... Yes! And ah. Ah. It's the simplest ah. thing in the world. <laughs> like, I, I hid it right before your very eyes. I disguised it with a million red herrings, but yes. Uh, Spider-Man, you, you, you need that hyphen there. Yeah. You gotta have no, that hyphen. hyphen. Otherwise it's pronounced it Spider-Man. Uh, that is a point for Maggie with uh, the hyphenated Spider-Man. I got Very a point. Good. <laughs> Look how I, they drew Aunt May. Like, oh. well, she's just, like what? That she's looks like, like the she's villain. She's the face of death. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's the secret villain they're that's talking what, about. She looks terrifying. Before before like you, she the moments before clothes. you die, that's what you <laughs> yeah. see. Yeah. yeah. The cover is saying somebody in this issue is going to die, and oh. it's a bunch of other people, <laughs> yeah. and we know it's going it's, to die. It's Aunt May hooked up to like a defibrillator. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what are these people will die? It's like, I, my she money's like, on Aunt May. Uh, yeah. She looks like a thump. <laughs> Now, we're not perfect here either, and we make mistakes, too. If you notice something that we got wrong, you can correct us by tweeting at UmActuallyShow. We might even give you a point and feature your tweet on our next episode. Okay, we're moving on to our next statement here. Uh, this is about Game of Thrones. In a clash of kings during the Battle of Blackwater, Sir Mandon Moore turns on Tyrion, leaving him disfigured with a crooked scar across the length of his face. Maggie. 
Um, actually, he took out a chunk of his nose That's as well. That's correct, yeah, he Thank cuts you. off his nose. Yes, mm -hmm. the, the scar is just in the TV show. In the books, he straight up slices his, his yeah. nose off, yeah. That's it. Also, crazy that his name is Sir Mandon Moore, which is very similar to Mandy Moore. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything much Ooh. to add to that. Well, so. in the book, it actually is Mandy Moore that oh, that's cuts true. his yeah. nose off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really weird, really weird part of the book where it's like, I have a new knight. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy Moore! She comes out singing that pop song from Princess Diaries. <laughs> totally. Stupid Cupid. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's another point for Maggie. Uh, this is about video games. Every installment of the Bioshock series features an array of superhuman powers made available to the player to the injection of gene-altering plasmids. Abilities granted by plasmids include classics like telekinesis and shooting electricity, and also bizarre powers, including the abilities to send a ghost to control machines, summon swarms of bees from your flesh, and safely remove a parasitic gene-altering sea slug from its host. Jordan. Um, actually, there's no plasmid for the sea slug thing. Incorrect. Um, actually, in Bioshock Infinite, they're not injectable plasmids, they're vigors. That, that is correct. Ah. That's what we're going for here. The very pedantic uh, <laughs> uh, thing that everywhere else they're called plasmids. I but in this particular installment, they're called So vigors. crestfallen right now. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you look Infinite, like a different person. Infinite is like the best one. <laughs> I've only played it once, though. Uh, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> this brings us to our last shiny question of the game. There's a little game called Under Review. We're going to put uh, a snippet of a movie review uh, on uh, the screen up here, and uh, it'll be up to you to see if you can identify what movie we're talking about oh. based on the review that's here. Let's go ahead and put that up there. Variety called it a blatantly derivative hodgepodge of Excalibur meets Star Wars. Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel gave the film two thumbs down and called it one of the most boring, nonsensical, illogical fantasies in a long time. Goots. Um, actually, Passion of the Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes no sense if you're trying to bring down the mafia. That's very funny. Do I just like Siskel and be like, what, the, what is this thing even? I, I don't get it. They set up the wine powers, it never pays off in the end. <laughs> uh, Maggie. Um, actually, is it Flash Gordon? It's not Flash Gordon, no. That's my favorite movie of oh. all time. Jordan. Um, actually, let's go with that Nicolas Cage joint where he's killing witches. Uh, uh, no, it is not the Nicolas Cage joint where he's killing witches. <laughs> Come on, what about my eyebrow work? Did you see that? <laughs> that I that almost was enough to convince me in a oh Jedi God. mind trick kind of way, but no. See, that makes sense because I could see Siskel coming back from the dead just to <laughs> negatively <laughs> review oh, that. Film. I don't remember this movie line. was so bad. I had to tell you how much I hate it. Uh, back to hell. Yeah. <laughs> Skulls in hell. Review the same movie over and over again. <laughs> always Mrs. Doubtfire. I'm gonna say no, no points for this one. No one gets it. Uh, these are reviews of the movie Crawl. Uh, oh, oh, Crawl. Oh. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, one of the huh. greatest films of all time. Uh, you don't think it's a uh, blatant derivative hodgepodge of Excalibur <laughs> meets Star Wars, or oh. one of the most boring, nonsensical, illogical fantasies in a long time? No, it's it's been a run joke in my my marriage <laughs> that when we were starting to plan our wedding I found an article there famously during crawl they did a uh, a movie contest where they found uh, couples that were about to get married they flew them out to Hollywood and owned up to Pinewood Studios I'm <laughs> sorry and they got married on the set of Krull. <laughs> but the movie had never been released and no one knew what it was. So if you look it up, Whoa. it's a whole bunch of people getting married on a set that they don't understand <laughs> and the women all look very upset <laughs> and just surrounded Every by the Krull guards. It's like, hey guys out there, do you love Krull? What's Krull? Get on out here, get married on the set of Krull. What's Krull? Get on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I imagine like one couple, like the husband was like, oh, we're going to the Bahamas. Like, this would be like topping that. Oh, yeah. Even and better, what's there. a more beautiful word than Bahamas? <laughs> crawl. crawl. What I, is crawl? I, well, it's a wildly original hodgepodge <laughs> of Star Wars <laughs> and Excalibur. I would love to talk with any of those couples. Just, just to see, see what they're still together, <laughs> mostly. Do you guys make it? Still together, how still how big crawl heads. How many of them actually <laughs> saw the movie once it came out, yeah. whether they liked it? Gonna go to CrawlCon 2018 <laughs> again. Unfortunately, no lovely story. No points around for, for uh, not being able to identify Krull. Uh, and that will bring us to our last question of the episode, which, as always, concerns real-life skills. 
Yes. Uh, these are not about any of the franchises we've talked about. These are just things that might be valuable in real life, things to know. So here we go. Knowing when to water your plants can make all the difference for healthy plants and environmental choices. Water infrequently but thoroughly, adding it gradually and ideally at night to avoid excess evaporation. Yes, Jordan. Um, actually, you want to do it ideally in the day? Uh, 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 let's hear what Maggie has to say, because you're, okay. you're, you're halfway there. Um, actually, you want to water them first thing in the morning, like dusk. Yeah, you you know what? You're more correct. I'll give you the point. What? Uh, <laughs> During <laughs> the, the whole day. Like this, but miss, you do. don't want to do it in the middle of the day because then you mm -hmm. will have evaporation issues. But you don't want to do it at night either because then it might evaporate too slowly and you'll get mold and fungus growing in your thing because you'll have too much water. Well. So you want to do it like dusk and uh, ideally dusk, maybe dawn when it's still bright out, but it's just starting to go to get find that perfect mm -hmm. balance of sun I and heat. I guess that and explains light. what's mm -hmm. wrong with my squashes. Then. Well, <laughs> I like still the dead. Dedicate that to uh, my lovely little uh, daisies grown out in my front porch that I do not water. <laughs> my partner does all the work. I have so. a dead basil plant that represents something in my life. Yes. For yeah. sure. <laughs> a love of crawl. <laughs> um, my love for crawl has died like this basil plant. <laughs> well, uh, that is a point, perhaps the most important point to Maggie. And what is our final score looking like here? Three, six, mm. three. So, uh, 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 six points for Goots, making him our clear winner, and tied for second, Jordan and Mackie with three points each. I think right. second place is the better place. Yeah, so us together equals There's two one of Goots. us over here. Yeah. We'll mash up, we're gonna mash up Jordan and Mackie. Yeah. We're gonna make our one, one Goots monster and we're putting uh, Jordan and Mackie together. Can we horrible. fire him yet? Okay. He's just been here He's forever. He's the best around, I don't know what to say. He gets results. He only did the Griffin, that's it. <laughs> Pretty good though. Well, that is it for our show. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually.